Hi, it's Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training. And this is a bit of a follow on video from my last one where we looked at how to filter as you type using the filter function. And that filter function is only available in Office 365. Uh, if you don't have that, there is another way uh, that I'm going to show you, and that's using a little bit of VBA code. Um, so that's what we're going to look at. Now, in order to do this, you will need to show the developer tab in your ribbon. Here's the developer tab on my screen. If that isn't actually showing, it's very easy to show. Just right click on an existing tab, go to customize the ribbon. And then what you'll see down here is there's a little tick box, which will be unticked for you. And if you tick it, click on OK, you should see the developer tab on your ribbon. Now, once you've got that on your screen, go to the insert button and under ActiveX controls, click on the text box control. Click on that and then just click anywhere in your sheet. You can resize it. About that sort of size would be good for us. Now, once you've got that, double click on it and that'll open up the Visual Basic Editor. Uh, the important bit here is that you can see the uh, properties for the control. Uh, and that appears like that on my screen. If you can't see it, go to View Properties Window or F4. Now, the property you're initially looking for is Linked Cell, which I can see down here. And the idea here is that we want to get it so that whatever we type in here appears in a cell somewhere on our sheet. And then Excel can use that value for the filter, the filter we want to apply. So we're going to link it to cell B1. So down here in link cell, I'm going to type B1, press enter. Now the other thing I'm going to do is just give this, this text box a better name. At the moment, it's called text box one. And you can see that actually it's created a sub procedure named text box one, and it's on the change event that this sub procedure is going to work at the moment. So we're going to change this to something a little bit more descriptive. We'll call it text, let's call it search box. Now I'll just get rid of that, and you'll see up here, if I go up to this drop down list, you now have that control as an option within that drop down. And you can see here that it's created a sub procedure for the change event of the text search box. So naming it, renaming it isn't absolutely necessary. I just prefer to name things, give them a little bit more of a descriptive name. So then if I need to refer to this particular sub procedure, in another sub procedure, it just kind of makes a little bit more sense to me if I've got a descriptive name. Okay, so that's the kind of first step is to link it to a cell. So let me just show you how that works. I'm going to come out of design mode. If I type something in here, like M, you can see now that whatever I type in here appears over here. So I'll go back into design mode, go back to the Visual Basic Editor. And what we're going to do is just write a little bit of code in here uh, that will filter our list uh, by whatever we type into our box. Now, before we do that, I do need to explain that this is in an Excel table, this data. And to convert it to an Excel table, all I did was click somewhere in the data and I went to Insert Table. I've already done it, so this is grayed out. Now, when you create a table, you get a little table design tab here, and you can give the table a name, and I've called the table Sales Reps VBA, and I need to refer to that name in my code. Okay. So, let's go back to the Visual Basic Editor, and the code that you're actually going to write is not that involved at all and basically start with the list objects collection 
list objects collection and you then state which, which list object you want to filter. So for ours, that's sales. If I do control space, oh, I didn't do it actually. Sales reps VBA. That's the actual list object that I want to filter. Then I can say dot range dot auto filter should appear here. Now, auto filter has a number of parameters and the first one is field. So um, that is going to be the field I want to actually filter by. So with the parameter it's colon equals and then you give it a value. Now I am filtering by the first column in the table. So the field that I'm filtering by is one. It's essentially after a numeric position, field one. That's my first parameter, comma. Then the second parameter is criteria one. So criteria one. Criteria one, colon equals. And what I'm going to do is concatenate the value that's in B1 with a wildcard character. So we'll see how this works. So I'd say range B1. Don't forget that's the cell that I'm linking my text box to. Ampersand. That does the concatenation, join things together. And I'm concatenating it with the wildcard character. So that basically means I'm doing like a begins with criteria. Whatever is in cell B1, then wildcard character. So can end with anything you like. It's got to start with uh, the characters that are in B1. Okay, so that is all I need for that. And this is this is basically this filter is working on the change event of the the text box that we've created. And that is the default event when you double click on the, uh, the text box and it brings up the VBE window. This is the default event and that's actually fine for what we want. So let's just see how this works. So I'm going to go into design mode here. And if I type something in here, let me type in an A, nothing. If I type in an M, you can see that I get all the sales reps that start with an M. If I type MI, it would just bring up the one sales rep that starts with MI. And you can see that whatever I'm typing in here also appears here. So I think we understand the concept now. I'm just going to change this a little bit. I'm going to put, well, first of all, I'm going to hide this text because I don't want to see it. I'm just going to change its text color. But I'm also going to put this up here. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to design mode and see how this works now. So I put in a C, I get all the C's. C8, I only get one. So that's working fine. But this, this search box is now stuck in this begins with mode. What if I also wanted to have the option to um, do a contain search? Okay, so let's just add that extra bit of functionality to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to design mode, go to insert, and I'm going to use some option buttons. My first option button here, and I'm going to put, I'm going to double click on it. And again, I've got to change the properties. I'm going to change its name. I'm going to call this OPT um, begins with. And the caption, that's the text that's going to appear here, is going to be begins with. Now I'm going to create another option button here. And I'm going to do the same thing, double click. And then I call this OPT contains. 
and down here I'll change this to contains. Okay, so now let's just close this temporarily. You can see the options button, you can only select one option. I think maybe they're slightly overlapping, are they overlapping? I think they were. Anyway, you could neaten them, up, neaten them up in terms of alignment and stuff like that. I'm not going to worry too much about that, but you can see now you can only select one of those options. So basically what I want to happen is, is when I obviously click here, I want this to perform a begins with search. If I click here, I want this to perform a contains search. Okay. So let's go back to the Visual Basic Editor. Now, I'm going to write a little if statement here. It will change what happens according to whether or not begins with is selected. So I'm going to say if option begins with. Now, you probably know that with if statements, you've got to have a true or false result. Now, if begins with is selected, it returns true, otherwise it returns false. So that is in effect my test. If option begins with is true, then I don't need to write equals true because it already is returning a true result. So if that is true, then I want to perform this filter. Otherwise, I want to perform a slightly different filter, and I could indent this, but the alternative filter is just very slightly different because what I want to do is contains criteria. So what I would do here is I'd have a wildcard character either side of the B1 reference like that, just put a little space in, okay. So if I now close this down, if I was to type in M here, aha, block without, yeah, so I'm going to use if, I'm going to do end if, just stop that. Okay, so if I was to type in, let's do a begins with, so if we say M, I get all the names that start with M. But if I go to contains, at the moment I have to retype it, but you can see it returns everything that uh, contains an M. Okay, now it's a bit of a pain though that we're having to sort of click into it and then retype it. So we need to make another little change to our code. Very, very simple. So I'm going to go back to the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to delete this up here. And I'm going to say that I'm interested in options begins with, first of all. And whenever I select it, I want it to rerun this particular sub-procedure. So I'm going to say call text box that one there, this sub-procedure, okay? And I'm also going to do that for the other option box. It does exactly the same thing. So whenever that is selected or clicked, it also runs this sub-procedure. So I don't have to have that thing where I have to click back into the text search box to get these filters to run again. So let's see if that now works. So I've got M there, so it begins with, if I go to contains, it now runs the contains filter. Go back here, it runs the begins with filter. Okay, so that's all I wanted to do in this particular video. Hopefully you found it interesting and useful. Uh, I will create a page on our website with the relevant code, uh, so you can copy that into your particular project. 
Uh, but for now, goodbye. Thanks very much for listening. Please subscribe and I'll see you next video.